Today on Crypto Channel Direct, confusion at Crypto.com as the Matt Damon-backed exchange appears to have suffered a major hack. Tonga is embracing Bitcoin and accepting it as donations, while Walmart follows Disney into the metaverse. We also round up the markets with Carsten Fredriksen, who looks at the impact of rising inflation and interest, while Dylan Dudney shares his view on a Walmart metaverse. I'm Claire Ross Brown, and welcome to CCD, where I'll be bringing you the news you need to know, powered by Concordium. Crypto.com, the popular exchange that has Matt Damon starring in its commercial, has had a taste of the darker side of crypto this week. On Monday, the exchange tweeted out a small number of users experienced unauthorized activity in their accounts. All funds are safe. The exchange went on to pause withdrawals from the site as it investigated what was going on, but things appeared to be more serious than first thought. Users on Twitter, including the co-founder of Dogecoin, Billy Marcus, started to unravel things. And one user, Ben Baller, responded to the tweet stating that they had been robbed of around 4.28 Ethereum, nearly $15,000. And he also pointed out that his two-factor authentication had to have been circumvented. Dogecoin's Marcus pointed out a strange pattern of transactions on one of the exchange's hot wallets and suggested a number of outcomes that could be happening, closing it by stating, never a dull day in the world of crypto. The plot continued to thicken, with Baller adding that his investigation of other wallets had shown him that as much as 5,000 ETH had been stolen from the exchange, amounting to around $16 million. Crypto.com insisted no funds were compromised. The company advised users to sign back into their app and exchange accounts and reset their two-factor authentication. The latest developments from this apparent hack is that $15 million in Ether, about 4,600 ETH, is currently being laundered via Tornado Cash, an Ethereum mixer according to on-chain data. Now, having made big moves into the mainstream with a $700 million sponsorship of the LA Lakers Staples Center and the Matt Damon commercials, Crypto.com is now feeling the sting of the unregulated space. Do you think that this hack will damage the reputation that Crypto.com has tried to build up? Or does this simply come with the territory? Let us know with your thoughts in the comments below. We now turn to the CCD Market Wrap with Carsten Fredriksen, a strategic crypto advisor who's going to be discussing how the worry of increasing inflation and interest rates are impacting Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and the financial markets in general. Since early November, we have experienced uncertainty on the financial markets and also in the prices of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Since the banking crisis in 2008 and 2009, central banks, especially in the US and Europe, have increased the money supply to stimulate economic activity. During COVID-19, the stimulus has been accelerated to counteract the global lockdown. The increasing money supply, enhanced by the current global supply chain bottlenecks, have caused an increasing inflation, which in US was recorded as approximately 7%, in November and December of 2021. In his recent economic outlook and congressional hearing, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell has emphasized that rate hikes are necessary to control inflation. If we see inflation persisting at high levels longer than expected, then, then we will, you know, then we'll, if we have to raise interest rates more over time, we will. Reasonable inflation and interest levels are usually a sign of healthy economic activity but sudden inflation jumps and rate hikes are not good in the short run for the financial markets, especially for the value of high growth emerging technologies like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. In the longer run, however, increasing inflation for traditional fiat currency does support the case for hard assets like Bitcoin with a hard cap supply of 21 million Bitcoin. The current Bitcoin inflation is approximately 1.8% or 6.25 Bitcoin per block every 10 minutes. And the future supply of Bitcoin is released through a public, transparent schedule where inflation halves every four years, in contrast to traditional currencies where the inflation is largely dependent on and controlled by central banks through interest rate and their money supply control. Throughout the existence of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, we've been at a bull market where central banks have supported the markets by keeping the interest rate low. If inflation stays high, central banks will not be able to continue their market support. In 2022, you should therefore keep a close eye on the inflation development 
since it would most likely determine Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency prices. It's another week and another news story of a major company entering the metaverse. Walmart has been quietly venturing into the metaverse following Disney in admitting that they have their own approved virtual world patents. The big box retailer filed several new trademarks late last month that indicate its intent to make and sell virtual goods, including electronics, home decorations, toys, sporting goods and personal care products. Additionally, the companies looking at going deeper down the blockchain metaverse route with a separate filing that said it would offer users a virtual currency as well as NFTs. And in a statement, Walmart said it is continuously exploring how emerging technologies may shape future shopping experiences. But it declined to comment on the specific trademark filings, according to CNBC. Disney's metaverse patents were recently discovered, and these come after Nike also filed a handful of metaverse themed patents back in November. Now, all of this mainstream interest seems to have come off the back of Facebook rebranding as Meta and signaling its own intentions. We now turn to Dylan Dudney, the founder of the Kai Lin Network and NFT3, to ask his thoughts on another big corporation exploring the metaverse and what this could mean for our lives in the coming years. Dylan, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure to be here. Dylan, you can't seem to go five minutes without hearing about some corporation jumping into the metaverse. Do you think that this is a good thing, especially for the growth of blockchain and crypto? Uh, yeah, on the whole, it's absolutely a good thing. Uh, more companies entering means more consumers entering the space. I think the thing to just be cautious about is the extent to which these companies are actually using decentralized technologies rather than just speaking to it or play acting at, um, you know, being decentralized or entering the metaverse. And I wanted to ask you, Dylan, about Walmart, because, I mean, they're talking about a 3D shopping environment and maybe even making their own crypto, dropping NFTs. Is this our new reality, do you think, in the coming years? I think there is a, a, definitely a faddishness or a trendiness to what's occurring right now. However, I think that, you know, five years out, three years out, even on to 10 years out, um, this is not going away. Um, so I think that I think that Walmart, you know, doing uh, an NFT drop or issuing their own cryptocurrency, ultimately, um, I think that's here to stay. Uh, and the extent to which these companies execute on it um, in in a way that is resonant for their consumer base, um, it, you know, that that will determine whether or not they're successful in, in, in the long term in adopting these technologies. Yeah, and of course, not every Metaverse Ventures is blockchain based, but can you share what this technology can bring to a virtual world that's not possible without it? Absolutely. So it, it, it represents a basic revolution in understanding how one, you know, lives one's life um, digitally or, or on the internet. We're used to living our life um, with this sort of bargain of uh, I will be able to use this great software um, to connect with my friends or to do X, Y, Z. And in return, um, you're going to use all of my information to sell to people to be able to sell to me better. That, that's a basic business model of the Internet, right? Um, that's undergoing a complete revolution, which I think is why there's so much you know, money and interest being poured into the experience of the consumer in a web in, a, in an imagined and future web three world um, because that is going to be an experience that is um, that is owned by the individual and that it, and that's that's the real key difference here um, between web two and web three or, or metaverse and you know just the internet um, and i think that that's something to well consider in any analysis of uh, of Web3 or, uh, or the metaverse or, or what it all means. Thank you so much, Dylan, for sharing your thoughts. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. We now turn to our educational segment, Learn with CCD. And today we're going to understand the difference between proof of work blockchains and proof of stake ones, especially in the light of environmental concerns around crypto mining. So blockchains operate on what are known as cryptographic proofs in order to validate transactions without the need for intermediaries. 
Now, these proofs incentivize people to maintain a blockchain network and keep it secure. The two most popular are proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of work is a necessary part of adding new blocks to a blockchain. Miners use computing power or work to solve equations, verifying Bitcoin transactions and add the next block to the blockchain. Proof of stake serves the same function as proof of work, but in a different way. So instead of requiring computational power, this blockchain calls on the participants to stake their coins for processing transactions and creating new blocks. The owners offer their coins as collateral for the chance to validate blocks. The Bitcoin network consumes energy to run as a proof of work chain, which has led to controversies about its sustainability. And currently the network uses more power than the entire nation of Ukraine. However, the environmental impact is often debated as miners are incentivized to use green energy as an example. If you're enjoying today's show, like and subscribe and join the discussion in the comments below. We'd like to leave you with an inspirational story about how Bitcoin is making a humanitarian difference in a small South Pacific nation. The island of Tonga experienced a large undersea volcanic eruption this past weekend, followed by a tsunami that flooded parts of its capital city. To aid with the relief efforts, the island nation is now accepting Bitcoin donations in the wake of the catastrophic aftermath. Former Tongan lawmaker Lord Fusitua has set up a Bitcoin wallet specifically for donations to aid the relief operations. And currently, there's around $14,400 in Bitcoin in the wallet. Last week, Tongan lawmakers also announced plans to use geothermal volcanic energy to power Bitcoin mining operations to aid the country's finances. Tonga has 21 volcanoes and is determined to follow El Salvador's lead to mine Bitcoin using geothermal energy. And there's also talk of making Bitcoin legal tender. Fusi Tu has said its adoption of Bitcoin could happen as early as November or December this year. Do you think the ball is really starting to roll with countries officially adopting Bitcoin? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on Crypto Channel Direct powered by Concordium. Don't forget to like and subscribe by hitting the button below. We'll be back next week with the news that you need to know. And until then, I'm Claire Ross Brown. See you next time.